Welcome to The Advocate, where topical issues are discussed in a no-holds-barred manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. My myth is, with the insensitivity of the federal government towards persons with disabilities, mostly in relation to the COVID-19 situation and the relief funds. Baba Sholas is saying we should stop with the unnecessary hailing of our politicians over bare minimum. Kayode is talking about the injustice of the Nigerian justice system. Shola, who makes her debut, takes us through the legal issues with e-commerce. And finally, Tolu explains the cancel culture to us. Sit back. The panelists are here to present your Sunday dose of provoking thoughts after this break. COVID relief funds persons with disabilities. Back in July of this year, it was announced that the federal government would begin data collection to identify people with disabilities to benefit from the post-COVID relief funds. Chris Abbo writes in his article, The Executive Secretary, National Commission of Persons with Disabilities, NPWD, in a press conference, announced the plan of federal government through Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development to transfer cash to 50,000 persons with disabilities as COVID-19 intervention fund. He stated that the ministry will implement the program through the commission, which would start identifying PWDs to benefit through a data capturing. And thereafter, the cash would be transferred to them electronically. Now, fast forward to the evening of Saturday, August 14th, and parents with children who have special needs, like myself, received notification that we should come to Teslim Balogun Stadium, Lagos, by 9 a.m. with our special needs child for data capture. Immediately, I had serious reservations. Firstly, the use of the abbreviation PWDs already pointed to the lack of consideration. They are actually real human people and not an association or entity to be abbreviated. Secondly, the federal government and its associates wanted all parents in Lagos to bring their children with disabilities to this one location one location in the whole of Lagos. As far as I'm aware, COVID is still here and so is the Delta variant. I could already imagine the scene, rowdy crowd, no social distancing and no organization. There was no way I was going and putting my child who has Down syndrome and a heart condition at risk. But I have that choice because I come from a place of privilege. For some parents, they had no choice but to go in chance of gaining access to crucial funds to aid their families given the des devastation of the past 18 months. I feel for these mothers and fathers who take their children with disabilities to the stadium. The government did not even consider how people would get to and from the location, given for many, mobility is a massive issue. Why not decentralize the exercise to the local level so that access would be much easier? Instead, these families and especially the children had to endure more trauma. In my opinion, this exercise was utterly reprehensible. From 9 a.m. to beyond 10 p.m., these families were there and many unfortunately unsuccessfully in the exercise. On top of the lateness, meant mosquitoes and hunger. As far as I know, all they were given was pure water and gala to sustain them. My heart and the heart of many of our special needs parents and advocates broke that day and many tears were shed. Why? Because it was a stark confirmation in physical form of what we already suspected. Our special needs children are not considered valuable as full human beings. The federal and Lagos state governments do not have sincere intentions and frankly do not truly care for the state of our disabled people in this country. That is all eye and lip service. If there was true will behind this exercise, it would have been decentralized for easier access and consideration for those the funds are actually for. That corruption and wickedness is so bad to the point that they are literally stealing from the mouth of babes. So, I you see the the 
You see, I'm stuttering, because I don't even know which words to use first. <laughs> because first of all, before we go into the, uh, the, the children uh, with special needs, and let's look at the idea of grouping people at one place. And it goes back to that attitude we have as a people. And that attitude is, we like to be, quote unquote, be in charge. We want to be, be yeah, the Mizak, I'm the one doing it. So that's why nobody, I'm, I, don't, I can't imagine how, like you said, all over Lagos, you bring in people to one place. During a pandemic. During a pandemic. pandemic. Even without a pandemic. pandemic. Yeah. I, I want to learn from what happened during the is it immigration recruitment, uh, recruitment years ago where people died. And now you're bringing children with special needs. They don't have total control. They need help of someone and all that. And you see, that's the same thing we do with our retirees. Mm -hmm. Where we say 80-year-olds, 70-year-olds come for recapture almost at a point. We have to tell mom, leave it. <laughs> it's not it's any, it's any big deal. Yeah. So that one on its own is an issue that we need to trash both in government and outside government as a people. Now, the idea of addressing these uh, children, like I like the, what you said, that they are not it's, not, it's not an association where it's okay, oh, these people. These are our Actual children. Human beings. They are human beings. They have that, the only thing is they have needs. And even in other climes, in spite of the needs, some of these children go ahead to be very influential and resourceful for the nation. But do we even have, okay, let's even say the, the capturing is done. What plans do we have for these kids? That for me is the question. What yeah. plans do we have? Yeah. How do we, okay, we just capture them, give them how much? Yeah. Like you said, gala and water, yeah. so. It's for not me, sustainable. For me, yeah, for it's me, the biggest problem, I mean, wh while you're talking, in my head I was just picturing a meeting room where human beings that have brains that function have sat down to say, we want to <laughs> deploy an intervention, right? These guys have brains, they're thinking, they thought, okay, it's a great idea. Oh, there are people with oh, disabilities. Oh, let's help, mm -hmm. right? I'm sorry, let's call them that, right? Mm -hmm. Then, when you decided you made that decision, mm -hmm. did you now ask yourself, how do we execute this? Like thinking people. Mm -hmm. You know, my problem is just the thinking. It's, it's a thinking problem. You know, did you ask yourself, well, oh, there's a pandemic. Did you ask yourself, on the average, how many people will come mm -hmm. to this place? Did you ask yourself, when they get there, what is the process for accreditation? Mm -hmm. Did you ask yourself, What's the process for the actual ex from ex from mm -hmm. accreditation to you know registration and then to the actual disbursement? I mean, this is not rocket science, but guys. Their needs are different. This is not rocket yeah. science. And what about for the welfare while they're there? Well, exactly. exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's the whole. I mean, it's you're trying to give money to what five thousand people, two hundred thousand people. You don't even know. I mean, it's ridiculous. So I mean, I, I think I think it's just a thinking problem because in my head I'm thinking this was probably a commissioner somewhere, or a governor somewhere, or a minister somewhere, these people went to school now. Who, I mean, unfortunately, yeah. might have meant well. Yeah. Let's not repeat the entire yeah, thing. Unfortunately, <laughs> it might have good intentions. Oh, let's cater for this, you know, the children with special needs and all that. But, I don't, like know, about, I don't said, know about intentions. The implementation. I mean, you yeah. don't know about intentions. I don't know about yeah. intentions. Yeah. Yeah. It reads again, more yeah. as a PR exercise that mm. went yeah. back. That's why I say I don't know about intentions. To be honest, yeah. okay. because who did they consider? Who did they talk to? Who did they go and meet? Who are the yeah. stakeholders for yeah, this? Exactly. I do know that they trained about 70 people um, from, the, I think it's called the NIPPD, or um, it's a, a association, I think, of intellectual people with, disabilities. with um, disabilities. And uh, they've trained 70 people to, who are disabled some of the uh, data capture. But that's the only thing, like, community-wise, I think, that was it done. Okay. Um, really, if this is meant to be something that's happening over 36 states, it's also something the federal government has control over mm -hmm. and, the league, and the state governments will obviously be implementing. However, the actual work, I don't think anybody really thought about the, it. The, the actual people. people yes, yeah. 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 the people. The, the thing is, they had good intentions. Mm -hmm. I want to assume yeah. Yeah. Assume, assume, yeah. Assume, yeah. Assume, yeah. No, no. It's okay to assume. I don't think I'm going to assume. I don't think I had good intentions. Yeah. But the thing is, what would have been the solution would have been to share this between the local governments. Thank you. So if I stay in Ali Mosho mm -hmm. and I close to Ali Mosho, mm -hmm. a child with disabilities 
has challenges with even moving to that location. So that's even the first it's mobility situation. problem. Yes. yes. You give me, you bring me to somewhere close to where to, I can yeah, exactly. access these resources, exactly. and that's not making it difficult for me. Or even go to their schools. Exactly. But I don't know what Baba Lema is thinking back back in the UK. I know yes. your case is different in the UK. You guys are well. You have a structure. I was going to say, let me come from another angle. That I, I think it's funny that in 2021, the federal government of Nigeria still believes that every child with learning with disabilities is poor. You know, uh, because if not, who sat down and thought the best thing we can do is to share money? I mean, this throwing money at problems is the reason why the poverty levels in Nigeria is increasing. And you know, let's not let's not kill ourselves. Nobody had good intentions. <laughs> These guys are going to pay for these funds yeah. and justify it with this fruitless exercise. Yeah, in the UK, uh, it's very that. annoying to see that even despite all the criticisms for this uh, conditional cash transfer you know, schemes mm. that have been in, in the midst of this, Nigeria has continued to do worse you know, on the poverty index. But yet they still think that the, the only solution they can provide for people living with disabilities during COVID is to give them share 10,000 10, naira for them. I mean, if Toyo's kid had gone there, I don't think the 10,000 naira would have done much, made, made a difference to her or to even the poorest kids. Well, you know, it's so always, I, it's always I, like, it's always like, you know, we're always, we do, we keep doing the same things. Even when we've seen that, it didn't work for normal people. Uh, well, a, Baba, and then I now we want to, you know, do a, the same thing again. a really, really good point especially in terms of throwing money at things. We actually have to tackle the problems, and it's not just about throwing money. So up next is actually Babashola. Stay with us. Ah.